All right. Thanks for joining uh, everyone for Education 34, I guess. I don't know if we put the notes in the wrong place last time, but anyways. Um, well, we have Dave joining for the first time, which is chill. Um, we'll see who else joins in. We can start with basically anything random that anyone wants to bring up to talk about. And then if not, uh, we can review the overall projects, um, addressing anything that might be interesting, and then um, maybe looking to, um, uh, and then Shingai will probably join later on, and we can talk about like the systems language and sysxml more at the end. But yeah, what does anyone want to start with or look at? I'm afraid I got nothing. Tom, anything, or we'll, we can look at the projects. Uh, no, I'm I'm not on top of anything just now either. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's just look at our. Oh, I'll um, I guess say I talked to Gary yesterday, and just about the uh, VP education role. So looks like someone else is excited to do it, which is awesome. And then there will be someone else in that role. And then we can continue this on Fridays or, you know. So it's it it's it was very positive. So I appreciate that Gary like reached out and everything. Okay. Did you say who it was? I, 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 he, he did say who it was, but I just don't know, you know, we'll find out when we find out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In the kind of, let's, in the system science area, there's kind of, and, and like, give any thoughts on any of them or, or if it's, if this is the right kind of some right sorting, but we have, um, Two SIG like efforts with George's uh work on the the general systems theory um curation and and juxtaposition. So that's kind of on the theory side, and Shingai's SIG on the processual and the modeling practice side. So these are two IS SIG groups um there's tom's model plus all of these following kind of writings and and uh some slides that you had sent like different things that we could just hear more about or um however and then we have um uh on mondays in the active inference institute discord uh, Mondays at 8 a.m. PT with Shanghai and several others. And um, he uh, drafted just uh, yesterday some uh, grant uh, drafts. Really good grant. To, uh, to <clears throat> it's for uh, Ethereum-related cryptocurrency grant modeling effort. Um, so we could even look at that. So any thoughts on this? That's just kind of how it, how it, it seems right now. <laughs> is, there, is there anything we should look at or is there something we're missing or? I can give a brief update on the GST effort. Yes. We had you. a meeting earlier this week, the steering committee, and, um, uh, there's a surprising amount of agreement among all the members as to where we go and how we get there. Um, we probably are going to target uh, mid to late March for our first general meeting of the SIG that will be open to everybody. Uh, and that will basically be the, the format that we're converging on is that 
uh, we send out a, a paper, target paper or chapter or something like that to those who um, want to read it. And uh, the expectation is that they will read it and jot down some notes and think about it and so forth. Um, and then when we have the open meeting, it won't be the lecture type meeting. It will be basically a discussion and um, people can raise questions if they've actually done some thinking about it. We um, are trying very, we're gonna be trying very hard to uh, keep the, the meeting focused on the target paper and uh, not, not open it up so anybody can say, well, but my theory is that or that. Um, we'll <clears throat> try to maintain some decorum, if you will. Um, and uh, then we'll have at least two other meetings, I think, before the conference. Uh, and we're hoping that we can uh, generate a lot of interest in papers that are, the, with the general subject being the name of the SIG, research toward a general systems theory. So um, <clears throat> Bruce McNaughton has uh, put together a, a masterful giant list, uh, or, or he started with uh, Rob Young's list of uh, candidate theories and uh, has put more details in what the, what the theory is about and has categorized it and so forth. He's using uh, um, uh, pivot tables to be able to generate different views and whatnot of uh, what's going on. So there's, we've accomplished, I think, a fair amount, and uh, hopefully this is going to spur everybody to to really be thinking about, well, what is a general systems theory, and how do we know it when we see it, and how do we uh, develop it so that it's useful? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Makes me think about some of the work in the, just in the consciousness area, where like there's been everything from narrative reviews to um, bibliography to like polling. Of, and so it's like, and still people that, that, that there are just, they, they kind of survey it. So it could be like the total catalog, the empirical usage through time of the GST, formal really I mean, there's just so many aspects just to even what you already have that it's awesome dave or um tom any thoughts on this or we'll Oh, just a quick uh, thought for the sake of my notes. Is it CISXML or CISML? Is that a separate initiative? Cis, wait, do you want to address that, um, Tom or George? It's different, but do you okay. want to? Okay, that's, that's all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. CISML is an extant um, modeling language um, as a UML partial overlap, I guess. I'm not familiar with this, but but Tom it like works with UML or have you worked with system uh, SysML? I've worked with it a little bit. It's a version of UML that was developed specifically for systems engineering. So it, it's a very wide overlap, broad overlap, but it has some additional features systems across like ISSS um publications and conferences etc like how often do you see sys ml I don't see it very often the worry I saw it was when I was attending some uh 
in cozy meanings. Okay. So used more in, in the systems modeling. I think so, yes. And I think it came along relatively recently in the last five years, maybe. Hmm. Um, so that's, that's that, um, project says XML or just kind of just, just other, you know, sys HTML or just all these other things. Um, we just are kind of using it to describe, um, the continuation of kind of, uh, like generalized notation notation was for the active inference models, but making a notation and, uh, uh renderable format related to George's first scheme just kind of total total um fully synthetic system totally described system to go along with the method so um I guess the one difference in approach would be rather than looking to uh thread the needle between, compatibility with broader UML and also introducing new things. Um, this is XML would represent like a first principles, like a uh, system science driven, system description driven and interaction driven, principles of systemness driven semantics because the semantics are about systems um rather than taking uh like a syntactic model file file compatibility type approach Let's go to block fronts or any other comments or thoughts on this. Oh, and look look more at the documents that Shingai and Joe have already made on this. I'll put it in the chat too. Here's the definition. Uh, th this would be a fun, fun topic. Um, you know, if people, if if Dave or anyone has thoughts, or or just to kind of for later, like in active inference, there's just the particular partition. That's the kind of simplest thing with the four states, and so that's kind of like the the thing is just defined as a full as four informational states. Um, this is a much more comprehensive uh and and multifarious <laughs> no, it's it's multi it's very multimodal it's not just numbers each of these are complex so this is at a very high level really the information that is at least possible not always needed or relevant but the possible information in systems description Whereas just doing an active model, if you're only having four variables, just temperature in the room and the air conditioner, it's going to be, it's not going to have electricity in that model, or it's not going to have um, uh, all these other kinds of, like other possible features of the system. So one is a very minimal mathematical, you know, minimal mathematical motif. And and this is more of a minimal systemsness, which is which is um more paradigmatic about systems. Okay, let's go to block friends. I think that we didn't talk about this last week. 
and then so let's look at the last one or two weeks of this and then also we'll then we'll go to um what um shingai has drafted for the grant and then maybe he will join and then we'll see okay i'm gonna put th this is in a different coda this is in the block for instance coda um okay so previously this is these are some of the um the pieces that are coming together with CAD CAD systems language active inference, cognitive systems modeling. And just bringing those three pieces together, that's why there's three active system science, GDS, G, GST, system science, modeling, execution, environment, and like systems engineering interface. Um, here we uh we haven't gotten any answers, but but I I think they're just just we want to just present the questions more. These were the kinds of qu big questions that we had about that um this intersection. So the, the, many of these were were from Shingai and uh, Pablo and maybe some other people who were at, at these meetings, um, like as we've discussed the. Uh, systems analysis method is is kind of co-created with the format. It's not about having a, a method independent format per se. So I think Shingai wanted to know about their process. Um, then this longstanding question about um, what exactly is the Bayesian graph? That's kind of like the big and total question for the ACTAMP generative model because that's what is constructed. So like, is it just naturally already a Bayes graph or is it something totally different or some mixture? If it already totally is, then it's it's a mega green light. If there's some Perfect. other pieces, then we could still work to understand how to understand it as a Bayes graph, but that would be awesome. And, and then if it is a Bayes graph, which is kind of where this was going, then could we use these various tools that are being developed around Bayes graphs in ActInf, like message passing and all these other approximation methods? Um, they've, in, in their work, like really explicitly connected it to the GD, what they call GDS, Generalized Dynamical Systems. So this is just an open question um what, what is the what are the kind of i mean like for example gds is gds in this gst category i mean what even makes would you say so george or what would you ask to determine if this even is well <clears throat> it's in the category but um you know, when you're working with dynamical systems, you're working with a whole different mathematics um, that uh, uh, are known to be fairly com complicated when you, you get systems that are full of nonlinearities and, and uh, 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 feedback loops and, and things of that nature. I mean, that's, that's why uh what's his name at MIT went to systems dynamics so and and compute computed models as opposed to trying to solve a set of uh equations Forrester Forrester yeah thanks <clears throat> so same same general category but very different approaches okay um, how does the how does the execution environment deal with time? Because um, uh, oh. because ActInf and system science will likely have many ways um, or very general ways of dealing with time. But just when it comes down to like 
how how is how is time discretized in the model and then like how is time discretized in the execution that it, it, it at least we have to understand it um just different things different kinds of model features um this is the kind of long-standing question of the active block for instance which is um people have used CAD CAD and other systems modeling as this kind of like infrastructural design like macro top down well if if the um like for example in their tokenomic work like if this is the rate of this incentive um or rate then you know this is gonna this curve in kind of macroeconomics but then what about the microeconomics of that situation like the decision making of the person multi-agent simulation the bottom up rather than the the top down um just like um, interest rate parameter sweeping. Um, so they've done multi-agent simulations, but, but there, it wasn't like it, we don't really, we just, we don't really know, but most of the simulations are very macro, like lockable Terra, like predator prey models, but the predator prey dynamical model versus having the bottom up simulation that recapitulates those curves. And then trying to connect it back to category theory and just, you know, that's going to be a thread or, or a, a approach or, or however that probably goes through a lot of the um, GSTs as well. Okay. Then at the meetings, um, basically Shingai shares the work uh, that he's worked on with Joe over the past week, including like the neuron and some and the uh, some other um, okay. Then last week, okay, yes. So we made a uh, uh, sys XML again. This is just just the name of uh it just it, it just whatever this the actual execution is so here we use the uh, p3if i think we have talked about this at a previous time but considering um what this tech could be from the uh from multiple perspectives multiple processes multiple properties and then we can have each of these um rows could have a status pending or not started or completed um and like it may be a format that helps clarify like when someone brings up oh what can it do this or what if it has this property you can just kind of add it and move on and prioritize micro aspects and also have more interoperability like within and across projects uh on these categories and uh, explore different ways to, to make it more visible, what work. So we, we did some sketching on, on that, that was fun. Then um, previously, uh, Shingai had done a systems analysis of the Gitcoin funding network. So it's they're kind of like related to GitHub, but it's not it's Gitcoin, it's like pu public goods funding. And uh, because everything's on the open blockchain, <laughs> better force uh like you can do those kinds of analyses so he may join uh, which will be good um but he has specific questions and basically this is with pablo fm um who made the active video game and uh he's applying to this a short this is the here, let's look at their this first i'll put this in the chat let's see what this even is well this is a forum where there's a like 
there's a forum discussion based and then also um probably some some kind of on and off chain votings for how the this token community develops this is just for context on this cryptocurrency if if people are not familiar with just like what this is so it's a layer two on ethereum ethereum is the base blockchain that's including the transactions um and that's the kind of that's called layer one's main blockchain layer then layer twos are uh used to kind of get away from some of the limitations of the layer one's limited transfer capacity and like block frequency and other aspects so just by including uh credible transactions like on and off of a blockchain or etc 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 then it can still reference the ethereum chain and work within that and kind of be anchored to the layer one's properties um, in some ways, but then also have like a different amount of space per blocks or like a different validation mechanism and all these other things. So Optimism OP is the name of the layer two that is on top of Ethereum. OP is also the name of uh, the the token. Um, this may be the first time that we've checked crypto prices during a meeting. Let's see how much an optimism is. And then, uh, let's see. So it started, it was probably airdropped, like distributed to people who had activity on the network and uh, et cetera, et cetera, in 2022. Three point six. Okay. So okay. So is think... Bitcoin Bitcoin and blockchain just an example that we're analyzing yes. here? Yes. So Bitcoin is an is a layer one. Like Bitcoin is its own kind of self-sovereignizing layer one. And then mm -hmm. there's like also layer two type things that just poke into the layer one. So then um, then in this setting, the layer one is Ethereum. And Optimism is a layer two on Ethereum, which is layer one. But Shingai is doing anal the systems analysis on Bitcoin because it's kind of the oldest and the classic, like one, the major difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum, not, not to go into this too much, but is Bitcoin uses the proof of work with the CPU cycles and the scanning through the hashes and, and one CPU, one vote. Whereas Ethereum started that way with proof of work and then moved to a different model with a proof of stake. So like one locked up, ETH one vote. So um that was that's the, that was um proposed for like um energy usage and like resilience and performance benefits, but they're very different and they're the kind of two major and the two too early of the and the major ones. Okay, if Shingon jo joins, he can explain more. Let's just read what, I'll put this in the chat. Conduct a systems analysis of the OP stack based on existing documentation and information. Okay. 
the Ember tier of contributors. Oh, perfect, you guys. <laughs> wow. Wow. Fishing guy, we we're just it, it was great timing. We we're just catching <laughs> up on <laughs> this. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Well, what should we um like look at or do or how just while we have um while we're in this meeting, what could we just kind of get maybe down from a systems analysis perspective or what would you think would be helpful for the last bit here um yeah let's see in terms of like what else to add to this document or um yeah okay look this document yeah. <laughs> these are the questions that yeah. you're not done with yet yeah yep yeah. <clears throat> okay so these are the these are the questions that we need to address. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like what is the what is the impact for them? Or it's just because so these are the team questions. Mm -hmm. And here's milestones. Is there any like overall project description or mission or are these? Um yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, I guess I would uh, maybe look towards the the document on their governance uh, forums where they talk about the yeah the mission for any insight. Um, yeah, to be honest, I feel like Pablo has like more insight into the nuances of like the community and what they're looking at. From my perspective, um, at a high level, it's just very obvious that no one is like really doing holistic systems analysis uh, in crypto. Um, and so I feel confident that it's helping me with Bitcoin and it will be helpful in terms of um, optimism, uh, helping them understand at a high level how all the different components of their uh, ecosystem interacts. But I would probably need to talk with them to get more insight into the value they might get for it. Like with Gitcoin, I just wrote the research for myself and shared it with Gitcoin and they found it to be valuable. So that's um how I approach these things. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Also, there was the intents and then what what page had that? Or it, maybe that's where we kind of say how it how the milestones reflect the intent. Okay, yeah. Just pasted the page with the intents in the chat. Then we talked about a little bit last time. Oh, which one did you choose? Or do you choose one or more than one on the form? Yeah, so um, each of the missions that they've proposed um, are aligned with a specific intent. So that one was for intent number one. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So can you list more than one or do we all, do we want to list one and focus on the proposition for to focus on one or how do you want to do it? Um, yeah, let me share this document my understanding and yeah maybe pablo has some insight but it's each mission is associated with a single intent and you have to apply for a mission that has already been approved by the community so anything we do has to fit into one of these missions on this uh, page right here 
uh, the the time slot for like proposing new missions has passed. That was on the 14th. So anything we do has to fit into one of these specific um, proposals and they are all aligned with only one intent. <laughs> All right. I mean, do you want to pick one and then we can, uh, or, um, yeah. So, I mean, I picked the mission, um, number, let's oh, see, yeah. number, um, do, 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 number six on this list. So I okay. picked number six. And so that forces us to be intent number one. Okay. Um, and I didn't see any other missions that seemed super well aligned. They did have one about, onboarding new communities oh, that are like not Sorry. crypto crypto native but um they took that one off so yeah from this list yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay okay um maybe just like george uh what what would or or anyone like what what would be discrete steps How 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 much and how to uh, uh other than uh, just you know making a generous estimate, but I mean, how do we just allocate effort and make a good proposal with milestones on it for sub things on the systems analysis? Um. I'm not sure what you're asking me actually. Like what what are good milestones for doing systems analysis? For doing systems analysis of Bitcoin or for or moving else. moving the project of how to do systems analysis? No, no just for the system of interest focused analysis on okay. on here for, for for this layer two, the optimism. What would be relevant milestones that are really what we want to know, but also make sense to them in terms of how they're going to evaluate it? Well, the very first milestone of course is figuring out what the system of interest is what the boundaries are <clears throat> yeah i think i listed that in the milestones like system identification that's the, yeah. the process of yeah i basically just took this from from your textbook the three the three phases that you outlined <laughs> Yeah, and that's um, all I could that's all I could report now. Yeah. I mean, I guess for yeah, maybe a bit of context, Daniel. Uh this for, for optimism, this would entail looking at the key elements of the environment within which optimism operates. Um, so like what are the key inputs and what are the key outputs? Um, so Inputs might be like the broader Ethereum developer community. Um, the outputs would be like code related to the OP stack. Um, yeah, that first phase would involve just being very explicit about what are the most relevant measurable inputs and outputs um, for the Optimism ecosystem. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to look at or, or do on it? Otherwise, we'll just fill it in in the coming days then. Um, there is one more document that will give a bit more context about the OP stack. Um, so I feel like this should be in the document, but pasting it here in the chat. So this is... Um, the documentation for optimism. So these are the OP stack components. And so um, we have uh, governance layer, settlement layer, execution, derivation, sequencing, and data availability. So these, you know, from their perspective are the components that they consider essential for the OP stack. Um, so for our analysis, we could highlight these as the essential internal components that we will start breaking down um, through our analysis and mapping out the relevant interactions and um, information flows between these components. And yeah, I don't, I'm not aware of any sort of holistic analysis that attempts to understand how all these pieces fit together, 
Um, and I think it would give any like researcher or developer who's looking for a um, an opportunity to contribute to this stack insight into like, yeah, ideal places to, to contribute. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I know like getting, not to get too technical, but um, the idea of like uh, zero knowledge proofs, um, optimism relies on like optimistic proofs, which is like game theory. And there are questions about how secure that is. Um, whereas things like ZK sync are using zero knowledge. And so I know a priority for optimism is to like catch up and start implementing zero knowledge proofs, um, so that they are relying on cryptography for their security rather than, um, game theory. Is that what Canon is and ZK? Oh, that's why they're proposed. Yeah, exactly. That's why ZK proofs is proposed. So anything that would help someone sort of solve this question mark of ZK proofs, um, yeah, would be very valuable. Yeah, this is interesting. Like with, with kind of, uh, with systems interoperability, hypothetically, you just have more options here, but if this interface were defined, then that would be a common interface between these two layers. Mm -hmm. can, that can just be defined slash, it's like, it's done. Mm -hmm. It's it's blanketed off from derivation by sequencing. It, and then just, these are all specific, inter, and then understanding like this interface and this interface, Focusing on what, what, how to do it there, and what the, how the interface, and, and then also like, yeah, that'll be. I mean, yeah. how much about how much do do we want to write about that? Because even just describing <laughs> that somewhere will be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, this is helpful. Just sort of talking it out in real time. Um, I think. I would start by breaking it down into maybe two levels. So you would have sort of like the, the social aspects that are about how does information get passed between people who are working on these different components? Um, how does that work? And then there are like the technical aspects in terms of how do these different technical layers interface with each other from a code perspective. Um, and I think that's where it'll be important to have a developer like on our team focusing on those technical aspects. But in terms of the social, I feel like we could do a lot of valuable work in terms of um, making it like, yeah, what are the communication channels that allow um, the people working on these different layers to um, communicate with each other? Because I think the um, the day to day of someone working on the governance layer of optimism is, uh, yeah, very different from the day to day of someone working deep in the technical execution layer. And the more they can be using common language and common understanding um, of the big picture, I think the more successful they should be. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, this is just one aspect of, of this system versus another um, tech development, all, all, not without precedent, like with, with a startup or something like that, but there's a currency or or whatever it's called. <laughs> not saying it's a currency, but just it is what it is. It, it is being routed. The the governance and the funding channels and are are the same, and and this can include changes to the monetary policy, mm -hmm. and the direct identification of like how much it would be worth to to build this. It in a essentially fiat currency environment within a within a crypto system so that's pretty wild that that, uh, that there's an open market for trading this token that that injects a lot of uh i mean that's what allows these crypto bubbles to form mm -hmm. and auto bubbles collapse yeah, absolutely. Um, I wasn't here for the first 
part of the meeting, but I think something that's coming up for me is I'm curious, like for everyone else on the call, um, like how much comfort is there with like this world of, of blockchain and crypto? Um, like, is there like a high level understanding that what we're talking about here is basically just a blockchain? Um, Cause yeah, I think the more that, yeah, people in the IS find it like interesting or like relevant to talk about these things, like the better. So like, yeah, I don't know, Tom, David, how do you guys feel about all this? Is it interesting at all or any questions that are coming up? <laughs> Interesting a bit. Uh, I see the obviously uh, layered architecture reminds mm -hmm. me of the ISO seven layer uh, architecture. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's generally mm -hmm. used in uh, communications. Mm -hmm. Tom, you and I are showing our age. I thought the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, the name of the seven levels architecture? The ISO International Standards Organization. Uh, mm. Seven layer. Is that what it's called, uh, George? Yeah. OSI. Yeah. Um, right. It, this uh, OSI layer with network transport session yep. presentation yep. application. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yep. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Physical yeah. at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've had very superficial uh, work with the ISO model and mm -hmm. only heard of crypto when people that listen to NBC heard of crypto. <laughs> not dug or and blockchain not not dug any deeper mm -hmm. yeah what, so just like what, oh sorry go ahead Daniel. Yeah. just what's really yeah. interesting yeah. is there's the physical layer which is actually obviously the seventh layer that we can describe which is mm -hmm. not just the data availability but the, the, the info physical thermo info physical basis and and all the physical components mm-hmm and then it 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 will be a blast from the past. Hmm. Doesn't it, it? It will line up in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And just yeah, trying to give a bit more context. The purpose of this OP stack and what they're doing is um, trying to solve the scalability issue in blockchains. Basically, blockchains are like Bitcoin and Ethereum are designed to be secure and decentralized but they are not optimized for um, speed necessarily. And so um, these OP stack sort of like second layer blockchains are designed to inherit some of the security and decentralization of blockchains, but also allow for um, like high throughput and low transaction costs, which um, yeah, things like Bitcoin don't maintain as they grow. So that's like the problem they're trying to solve. Yeah. So I, is this used? No, is sorry. this used for uh, things other than Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. It's used for other exchanging, other other tokens being exchanged. In fact, kind of not Bitcoin. Like mm -hmm. not to be over by metalist, but like Bitcoin's like gold, Ethereum's like silver, and. Uh, so this is kind of the silver paper silver ecosystem is like the L2 on silver. Absolutely. And I think another point is that the purpose of blockchains like Ethereum and this blockchain, which sort of lives in the Ethereum ecosystem, is to empower developers to build um, decentralized applications. So if you wanted to build Facebook and if you wanted to build Twitter, but without a corporation running it and instead have the network owned by the users, um, they are providing the tooling that would allow you to build such a thing. So it's, yeah, even though there is a monetary component, which plays a role in security, um, the purpose of these tools is to help build applications that are more decentralized and distributed. Another aspect on that, um, just from like the D side is it's not going to be cost effective or better or or effective for Ethereum if papers were uploaded onto the la the layer one blockchain. Like people do write sometimes data on chain, but that becomes replicated whether you use proof of stake or proof of work, whatever. That be that data just gets replicated in part of the ledger forever, um, on like the base layer. So the move is kind of like make these L twos that just have have a an understanding of their punctuated 
interactions with the L1. And then in that L2, there could be um, a strategy for file attachments that's just totally designed to be right for that, that doesn't have to abide by the L1, um, whichever one of these it is. So then, then that would allow like storage of large data sets that are that are related over any reasonable time period to the security of the L1, but have like unlimited file storage and all that stuff. So. Yeah. Daniel, could I do a quick screen share? Oh, please. Oh, okay. Let me just yeah. go for it. Okay. So this is a like more concrete example of a decentralized application. So this is a um, app that I'm running on my desktop. It's called Warpcast, and it is essentially a um, decentralized Twitter. Um, and so it's all open source code. Anyone can run like a local node on their computer that hosts all the information on the network. Um, and it's seen a lot of usage primarily within the crypto community, but it, it's starting to get a bit more growth. Um, and this is actually built using the optimism stack. So this is like the type of thing that um, people are building concretely using blockchain technology um, to try and have a more decentralized approach to these systems that are like an important part of our daily lives. My interest in uh, blockchain is has to do with distributed governance. Mm -hmm. I and I have already talked about this, but I think that's a really important, uh, secure, mm -hmm. secure governance. Yeah, I think there's a lot we could learn from optimism in terms of how they govern their blockchain that would inform our thinking about blockchain in general as a tool for governance um, at a very high level. I would say systems like Bitcoin adopt a very minimal approach to governance. So there's no like formal governance structures. Um, whereas with optimism, they have councils, they have like a bicameral system where token holders get to vote on various proposals. Um, so we can study the different ways in which blockchain communities approach the governance of their blockchains. Um, and I think that could help inform our thinking long-term about what does it look like to use blockchain as a governance tool more broadly. Um, very excited to dig into those, those topics. Excellent. It looks like the world is evolving the way it should. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, just... That's awesome. Yeah, please. <laughs> I was just going to ask, could we look at this as a uh, evolutionary step in systems development of blockchain? I think it continues a lot of the inertia of writing and records, but also has some qualitative differences, perhaps, with with cryptographic details that that letters and writs didn't have. But we'll see. As emergent, as emergent properties. Another, another realm where uh, governance and zero proof identification and so on are highly relevant is the Internet of Things. The Spatial Web Foundation is working to take a lead on standardizing uh, governance in particularly mobile entities, very small entities, fast moving entities. Uh, in addition to uh, Daniel, has anybody else worked uh, or looked at the Spatial Web Foundation and its uh, activities? I've only taken a brief peek, I think because Daniel has mentioned it, um, but I will definitely do a deeper dive. Um, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh... All for joining. Thanks a lot, Shingai, for joining again. That that's awesome. And we'll uh in the coming days write a little more and uh see what Pablo has to say, and then try to get that optimism. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um thanks yeah. everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bye. <laughs> bye bye.